Hey guys, good day, good day, good day. It's your girl, Miss Debs, coming to you from here in my kitchen in Orange, New Jersey, giving honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, because he's so worthy to be acknowledged and praised on this day and every other day, wouldn't you agree? Because without our Father God, hallelujah, there could be no me, no you, no us, no this. Guys, I'm making a quick meal for me and my three sons. We're going to make, we have some grilled and ready chicken breast. It's going to be nice, simple, and healthy. So we got a whole bag of Tyson grilled and ready chicken breast strips. I added some onions and peppers that was cut up. Then I had some more little chopped onions. I put that in. I'm going to cut these uh, pieces of chicken and strips over here. Oh, and I'm adding some of my perfect pinch rotisserie chicken seasoning. Guys, um... I've been going through a lot of things lately. That's just butter right there with um parsley. I've been going through a lot of things lately. You know, like I wanted to just tell you guys, and I know this is a cooking video, but I like to feed you spiritually and physically. Spiritually, I've been going through some things. You know, I've been crying a lot lately and I don't mind sharing. If I'm going to get up here and tell my life story and invite you into my family and my home life, I'm going to tell you the real deal. I'm going to tell you things that I experienced and you would expect that from me, right? Maybe some of you care, maybe some of you don't, but that's okay too. But I'm going to tell you, been going through some spiritual things and I found myself crying a lot recently. Don't think I'm crazy. Then again, if you do think I'm crazy, everybody's entitled to that thing. I know I'm not crazy. I'm just telling you what I'm going through. I've been going through. So what I'm doing here now, guys, I have some soft tacos. I'm just you know, I like to heat mine up. I cannot eat a plain taco like that. It has to have something on it to give it that crunch. I've, just, I've been like that all my life since I was introduced to tacos. But let me tell you, been crying a lot. And it's not tears of sadness or overwhelmed or just going through negative vibes or just stress. It's not that type of cry. But I'm questioning God, why am I crying so much now? Is it a cleansing but I just feel like with this walk with God, I started taking my journey with God. I've been having God in my life for years, off and on. I would go in, I would go out, and I'm just keeping it real. I can't lie to him. I could sit up here if I was that type of person, which I'm not, and lie to you. But I can't because for what reason? So um, I noticed I've been crying, like I said, and I'm like, God, why am I crying? And I'm getting some of the answer that maybe it is a cleansing. Maybe it's me shedding off the old and putting on the new. But I realize when you walk for God, you have to give some things up. So I don't know. Maybe some of you would like to hear this. What I'm about to tell you and let you embark on what I did give up. I gave up things that I used to do in the streets. Things I used to do relationship wise. I'm not into that. Um, you know, I know God has someone out here for me. I truly believe that. And when the time comes, I don't want it if, it if it doesn't come from God, you know, that's just my belief. And that's how I feel personally. But I gave up a lot of things. Um, I don't curse anymore. I don't do things. Let me just put, I don't have to go into all CD details, but let me just put it like this. Things that is not of God. I don't indulge in anymore. Certain programs I won't watch on TV anymore. It doesn't make me better than anybody else. I'm not putting myself up on a pedestal. I'm just a raggedy rag that's constantly being ringed out to dry to come to my full potential. You understand what I'm saying? So certain things I don't do anymore. And um, like I said, it doesn't make me better than anybody else. It's just things that once you start walking in God's presence and you want to satisfy him instead of satisfying the flesh and yourself and what you can do and what you can gain from it. Once you totally give yourself the Christ and say, look, you know, I don't even want to go that route no more doing those things, you know, that I know it's not of God. So I just feel ever so grateful that he chose me. And I truly now get that I feel that I am a chosen one. It, like I said, it doesn't make me better than anybody else. It doesn't make me like I'm up here and somebody down there. I'm just thankful that all the things I went through in my life now, I get it. It was for a purpose and a reason. And I'm getting it to feel like 
all those mishaps and that craziness that I went through, it was for to make me grow substance, to make me grow perseverance, to make me know in life that there's a better way than how I was doing it and how I was going about things, you know? So um, with this, when you start walking for God, you have to be bold. You have to, not that you're going to, you can't draw people in by being nasty and judgmental. And like, I gave up my Halloween things. And I know a lot of people used to come to my channel and they didn't like that. And they had every right to voice their opinion. Like I felt in my mind, I had every right to put up in my house what I wanted to put up. But it's like, when you're doing things and you're walking for God, people are going to scrutinize you and they're going to look at every little thing you do. Okay, you say you're walking with God. Then why you got that in your house? Why are you living like that? Why are you talking like that? You know, pe that's how people are. They quick to point the fingers at you to uh, let people see your shortcomings, but they don't think about the things that they do. But that's okay because you forgive and you move on. And I know I couldn't do it when other people was telling me to do it because that wouldn't have been me. I have to do it when the good Lord laid on me and opened up my eyes and let me see the way I was going was not how he wanted me to go. Now, am I going to judge other people because they have up stuff in their house for Halloween? No, because that's not my style. Because what you do in your house, don't make me use the bathroom one way or another. And I don't mean to sound cocky. I'm just keeping it real. And if anybody know me, I've been like this all my life. And it's not that I'm, you know, pointing my fingers at somebody else now because I'm deciding not to celebrate Halloween. That was my preference. I had to get to that point where I understood what I felt like if I'm following God, you know, certain things I just don't want to do anymore. And I'm not knocking anybody else. And I'm going to repeat that again. I'm not knocking nobody else because God knows what we're going to do before we do it anyway. But I want to respect him enough to say I'm laying everything down. That's what I was saying last week in a video that sometimes you have to you have to pick up your cross and you have to bear it. And whatever that cross is, whatever your situation is that you have to overcome or you have to get through or you have to let go. That should be between you and your God. To know that certain things in life, God, I don't want to do anymore. I don't watch certain pictures with uh, sexual things in it. And that's just me. Because, you know, the flesh make you want to act on certain things. You understand what I'm saying? And um, I don't uh, drink. I don't do drugs. I don't smoke. I'm not knocking nobody else. This is my walk with God. And I'm explaining to you what I'm going through. So um, I just want to explain that to you. Like a lot of people that used to like come around and see me. And I'm not just talking about YouTube. I'm talking about people, friends, family members in general. I always felt like alone anyway. I told you guys that story. I always felt like there was something else in my life that was supposed to be going on, right? But sometimes we don't heed to the call because we're so wrapped up in this world and things of the world that um we're not ready to let those things go. So when we hold on to things that don't mean us any good, we can lose our blessings. And I see that now, you know, we can actually lose our blessings because I'm just chopping up the meat. Now, as you see me keep going in the pan, taking out more meat, but we can use, lose our blessings because you have to give up something when you walk with God. You have to be bold. You're going to go through some spiritual warfare, which I went through. And when I put up that video and I came from the heart and I was so passionate and honest about what I was saying, I was saying how I was having the night terrors and I was being attacked spiritually and people was like oh one guy even commented and said oh you were smoking that good stuff huh and he probably didn't mean no harm by what he was saying but um it wasn't a joke I really was spiritually and physically attacked you know those dark forces that the bible speaks about that stuff is real guys you know I was um it had me to a point one time I was questioning my walk with God because I was like man am I going to get crucified like this literally and um then it took me back to saying the holy spirit spoke to me and said well you thought it was gonna be an easy walk <laughs> didn't jesus christ get crucified didn't they condemn him for nothing that he done and they hate jesus just because he's jesus so what you think they're gonna do about you miss nobody and i was like wow that's so true like you say you want to walk for God and we quick to ask him for things when things are not going. Because I've been there. Things haven't been going the way we wanted to go in our life. Oh, Lord, if you would get me out of this, if you would help me with this, if you would find a way for me to get money to pay that bill, if you would help me get my car fixed, if you would work on my children, my, my spouse. 
If you will help me work on me, God, I'll change. And then once he grant us that, we go right back to our old habits. And that's not what I want to keep repeating that pattern over and over again. Because I was getting stuck. It was like a wreck. And you remember them old 45s? You young people probably don't even know what I'm talking about. But them 45 records and them albums used to play them. And uh, the, the needle would get stuck in the groove, as they call it. And I was like, I didn't want to keep going through the same thing over and over again. Like, if I'm walking for you, God, I want to come to you correct. I, God is there. He will listen to everything that you go through. He knows what you're going to go through before you even go through. These are the, um, so we're going to take my son Kyrie food over to him. I'm just putting a little olive oil in the pan. And um, let me put a little bit right there. I'll put a little bit in the frying pan too. And I'm going to put another tortilla there. But this is what I'm saying. When you walk with God, you have to be real. Because you can't lie to God and you can't come to him fake. Now, it doesn't mean you're not going to fall and you're not going to go through trials and tribulations and you're going to question things. Because like I said, when I was getting physically attacked in my bedroom at night and I've been in this apartment for years and I never had experienced things like that, like um, I was afraid. And I told you guys this. I don't know if any of you remember the video that I did, but I had actually was so afraid to go to sleep for five days. I stayed up and I wouldn't go to sleep till the dawn of day came. That's how afraid I was of going to sleep. That's the honest to God truth. And I was like, wow, what is this going on? Like, why am I getting hit like this? And then it dawned on me, why not? If you want to walk for God and you want to be come to him with a heart that you want to clean you up physically, mentally, emotionally, clean up your flesh. Don't do things that you used to do. It's going to come with a price and it's going to come with a cost. And if you're not willing to make that sacrifice, then there's no need for you sitting here playing with God because he had more better things to do than to, than to play with you while you're trying to get it together. So you come to him with a clean heart. Well, you come with him to the best way you know how and ask him to clean up your heart. Let me let me retract that because you're not going to come to him with a clean heart. You come to him and ask him to work on you daily, mentally, emotionally, physically. Tell him to tame your tongue because out of the tongue, can reflect life or death. You can say something about somebody and cause that person, someone else to hurt that person because you spread it a lie or a rumor, or maybe it was the truth. Be careful what you say to people. Be careful to the words that you project out of your mouth because I was good for that or I can curse to the cows come home back in the day. And when I got angry, I can let you know I'm angry. But God is working on me and he's taming me and he's calming me down and he's showing me there's a better way to life where you can get your point across and you don't have to shout and holler and curse and hit. And, you know, when you come to God, just ask him to clean up your tongue, clean up your head, your heart, because out of the heart grows a lot of foul. Okay, guys, so as you can see, my meat is done. The onions and peppers, I added sage. Rotisserie chicken, perfect pinch seasoning, and I also added some thyme. That's all we need for that. I have some arugula on the sides here. I'm making my tortillas where I'm just heating them up, getting a crunch on them. Then I'm going to shred my cheese. I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that. But getting back to what I was saying, let me turn that off. Um, we as people, you know, like we take God... And I know through the years, like I told you guys, I was straight up honest about that. A lot of times I never, I've been following God for practically three quarters of my life. And I never um, gave up on God, but I would just go back to my own earthly ways because I wasn't ready to give up the world. And it wasn't nothing that I was doing spectacular, but I wasn't ready to give up certain things that I knew that was not of God. I wasn't ready to put them on the shelf. Like I said, now... I got older, wiser, wiser. I feel like God allowed me to go through certain things in my life to put me where I am today. I take none of the credit for it because it's all for the glorification of God. And why wouldn't you want to glorify him and serve him? He's our awesome God. He made this. So I'm just saying, guys, um, it's for the taking, you know, like. If you want to be closer to God, you have to put in the work. You have to put in that time. And it took me a while to get here. So don't think I'm body sh I mean, I'm shaming anybody and saying, oh, you should have been at this point in your life right now. I'm almost 60. I'm 58 to be 59. So it took me a minute to get it, to really let it register that, yeah, this is what I want to do. I want to be here to serve my maker and draw in as many as his children that he will allow me to draw in. 
So once you put that in your mind and you get serious about it, this world has nothing to offer me anymore. I don't care about riches, fame. And, and you say, oh, you say that now, Ms. Dad, because you ain't got it. No, I say it because if it was given to me today, if God wasn't in the midst of it, I don't want it. You can see the most happiest people. And you say to yourself, sometimes they homeless or they don't have this. They can't pay this bill or don't have food in their refrigerator all the time or the certain clothes that they want to wear. And they're just the happiest people you ever wanted to see. On the other hand, you see people that's rich, billionaires, millionaires. Walking around, committing, you know what, getting rid of their own selves on this spiraling road with drugs and alcohol and just not happy. You understand what I'm saying? So does money and fame make you happy? No, that's not the end of the story. That's not what it's all about. It can buy you things that have put you in a temporary place of happiness. But it's not all it's cracked up to be. And, um... My thing now is not about me. I have to lose myself. I had to lose Deborah to gain God because the way I was going and the things I was doing that was of this world and that wasn't pertaining to my heavenly father, it knocked me down and it showed me that that's not the life I want. You understand what I'm saying? There's more to life than that. So um, I'm just saying when I'm not deterring anybody. When you want to come to God, you got to come correct. You got to be honest with him. You have to let him know, Father God, I know I have some, you got to do some cleaning up with me. Give me the strength to endure. Because I'm going to tell you something, guys, and I'm going to stop with this right here. But when I was getting those night terrors at night, I was questioning things. I was like, wait a minute, why am I, do I want to go through this? Is it worth it? Yes, it, it's worth it. To have the almighty to be on your side and protect you. From hurt, harm, and danger. And it doesn't mean you're not going to go through things. Yeah, you're going to go through things. Because it's all to build up character and substance. And it makes you rely on him. When he gets you through things that you didn't think otherwise you would have been able to get through. So um, just come to him and say, God, clean me up. Do with me. I'm at your disposal. Do with me what you will. I have always been bold. But I have a little more boldness about me. But it's in a, a godly way. He said, I drew you. Through kindness and meekness. Through kindness and meekness have I grown, have I um drawn you. And you don't get it by hollering at people and pointing fingers. And because look, people were saying, Oh, you shouldn't have those creepy things in your house. Getting back to the Halloween. I'm through that now, but I'm just telling you what I went through. I was like, you know what? Can't nobody tell me what I'm gonna do in my own house. This is what, but when you're walking for God. Certain things is just not going to fly. Now, whether it's right or wrong, that's up for debate. And that's for you to decide. I feel in my heart it was time for me to let it go. You have never seen me since I've been on YouTube but not without having my house fully garthed out and dark, you know, for Halloween. Because I like scary things. And that's just it. But I didn't start doing that. I was always taking my kids out for Halloween. But I never got into the... I mean, I spent thousands on stuff, guys, for Halloween. I really did. But... Hey, at that particular time in my life, it served the purpose and now it's over. I thought it was going to be more harder than it was for me to let those things go. But God got me through it and he'll see you through whatever vice you're holding. That's holding you back and holding you for um, from being in the light with God, like to give it all to him and, and you give up something for him. Because even back in biblical days, back then they had animals that they sacrificed. This, you only have to pick up your own cross, deny your flesh, deny yourself for worldly things and give it all to God. And he will see you through. it. He will see you through. it. You just have to believe. And you got to put your foot down and tell that old enemy. I'm tired of you putting this crap on my back like I'm carrying a monkey on my back. I'm tired of doing things that when I wake up the next morning, I'm going to feel guilty and ashamed of. And I'm just tired, God. I'm ready to I'm, I'm ready to let your will be done in my life. And when you get serious with that. You don't care what people think about you. I don't care how people think I look. I got some bottom teeth on. Well, I got some teeth on the bottom that I had to extracted that I have to get fixed. And that's a cosmetic thing that can be fixed. But I don't care what people say about me, what they think about me. You can judge me all you want to. They judge Jesus Christ every day. He walked this earth when he started working, walking for God. So they're going to judge me, too. Some people just not going to like you because you carry that light on you. They're not going to like it because, see, your lightness will put a spotlight on their darkness. And people don't want to be exposed. They like to do little nasty things in the dark, out of sight, out of mind. You don't see me, I'm not doing it. 
But I just want to let you know, I'm not here to expose them either because the enemy doing enough of that. He drags them in and promised them the world. And then he put them out there on front street and let everybody see all the ignorance they ain't done. Did he? <laughs> let me stop. But anyway, um, and I pray for him too, because you know what the devil have taken some even better than him away from here and, and took a hold of them and they couldn't let go once they got a hold to him. I thank God he got me out of his clutches. You know, but um, it's just something to think about and just know once you walk with him, you will never be the same again. If you're serious about it, you're going to have to give up some things that you never thought you would be capable of giving up. You're going to have to let go some vices. But you ask yourself, is he worth it? To me, he is. And I don't want to go back to the things I used to do. And by his grace and mercy, I'm not going to go back to him because I've already been there and done that. And you fooled me once, fooled me twice. You ain't going to fool me again. I know who brought me here. Who can take me to whatever heights that there is to soar. And I don't have to worry about being on the other bandwagon with the enemy. Because Jesus' name has power. And as long as I call on my Jesus and my God, I could care less what he out here doing. And I'm not even afraid of him anymore. God bless you. I will show you the end of this food. I hope that was daily feeding for your spirit. And I'll show you what I finished making here for my family. God bless you. Now, guys, I'm putting a little oil in this pan over here. I'm going to show you the pan. And this is how I make the tortillas for. Let me turn this up this way. Oh, no, I got to come back here. Can you see that? Yeah, okay, you can see it right here. Okay, so this is the tortilla, right? I put the oil in the pan. Now I'm going to put my cheese in it. That's the five cheese blend, Italian blend. And cheddar cheese. So I'm going to put a little bit, a handful in the pan, right? Spread it out a little bit. Then I'm going to lay my tortilla right on top of it. I'm going to put a pot top on it. And it's going to melt my cheese to my tortilla. Okay? And I'm going to continue to do that till I do all of them. And then I'll show you when I bring it out how it looks. Okay? So that should be done like in a minute or so. Then I'm going to... um put the arugula on it and I'm going to show you how it goes. But it's very easy and simple to make. Okay, I'm going to bring you over here. I'm just spreading out the cheese and I'm going to let you see this. This is a nice, easy meal to make for your family. You don't have to slave over the stove. The grilled chicken is already um, cooked in a sense. You're just warming it up. So you see how the cheese is on the bottom of this tortilla. And once it all get together, watch this. You just flip it over. You see that? And that's how we're going to do the rest of them, okay? I'll show you when I finish. Again, I have the butter in there. I'm going to add my cheese. Put it right in the middle of the pan. Now I'm going to add my tortilla. Put it on top. Put the top of the pan on it, the top of the top on the pan so it can melt the cheese and let it blend in with the tortilla. And again, this is the last time, but I will show you once I get it all together. Okay, guys, so quick fast and then hurry. These are the cheese tortillas. Don't they look delicious? Now I'm going to go real fast because my battery is running out. I'm so sorry. So here we have our arugula. I'm going to make two. And the arugula is good. It's healthy and earthy and it gives it that nice bite. Then we're going to add our meat and peppers. Here's another one. And then you're just going to roll it up like this because it's pliable because. And that's them, guys. Look at that. Put a little more meat up here for this one. And that's how it goes. And I'm going to give that to my sons and that's what they're going to have for dinner. Thank you for joining. I'm using general towel sauce and spicy harissa mayonnaise. And here we go. This is how they look. That's the cheese melted in it, the cheddar and the Italian five blend. Look at that. Grilled chicken, onions, peppers, and arugula, and the spicy general Tao sauce. 